All right, so if you've seen my videos before, you know that I talk a lot about mindset when it comes to building a brand and business around your music, let alone promotion, marketing, all that good stuff. But what about when it comes to money? I remember the first month that I ever made over $10,000 selling beats online. It was early 2010, uh, and I thought that my life was forever changed, and it could have been, until I spent it all. And then the next month, I made about $2,800, and the next month after that, when I thought things were real bad, I think I made about $1,200, and things got real tough, real fast, yet again. The reason that I'm making this video is because I want to not only put myself back in that place and always stay centered, stay humble, but also kind of talk through the process with you guys on how making money is only the beginning of having, having a career making music. As a producer, as a beat maker, as a songwriter, lyricist, session musician, it doesn't matter. What we ultimately want to do is have enough money to be comfortable off the music that we're making, but how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? doesn't matter if you've been making music for six months or six years and you're living comfortably doing it now, whether you are a musician in a huge band, a producer with tons of traffic and tons of sales, or somebody just getting started, you have to understand the importance of mindset, not, not to mention the budgeting, right? They go hand in hand. When I first started making money with music, it was coming off the tail of making money with graphic design, making money with a couple other side hustles, to and including the Golden Voice. Thank you for calling Best Buy of West Orlando. Your call is very important to us. My point being that I'd always just kind of lived paycheck to paycheck in my entire life. And here I was living job to job, living project to project, living freelance opportunity to freelance opportunity. So when I started making music naturally, I was doing the same thing. I was waiting from beat sale to beat sale, beat exclusive to beat exclusive with leases filling my gas tank. One thing we have to look at is how we're spending our money. And I'm going to tell you this. I made several mistakes in my life when it comes to budgeting. I'm uh, statistically not the greatest with money. Now, you know, luckily, I've grown into a little bit more maturity and a little bit more financial literacy uh, in my 30s now. But if you're watching this, you might be in your teens, you might be in your 20s, or you might be right along with me, uh, you know, trying to figure things out as a millennial. The issue that we have is that when we're working a day job, when we're working that nine to five where we're getting a paycheck every week, every month, every bi-weekly pay period, it's really easy to not worry about taxes. It's real easy to not worry about where the next one's coming because we're scheduled, right? This is a full-time gig or it's holiday season. We're making, making a ton of money. The issue is how many of us want to walk away from that? And I could tell you firsthand back in 2009, when I was let go from a company that I thought that I had relative job security in because of the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, finally catching up within the industry that I was working full time while I was trying to make my music dreams a reality. All of a sudden I found myself on the front step of my apartment building with notices saying they're going to come and evict me. Multiple calls every single day. They're going to come get my car, if my phone was on, for that matter. And why was that? It's because I didn't have unemployment. I didn't have a plan B. All of a sudden, I found myself unemployed with a computer with some beat-making software, or Photoshop, CS2, and a whole lot of time on my hands, yet no income aside from what I created myself. When I'm working the day job, it didn't ever dawn on me that I had to budget for a situation like this. Never resonated with me that, oh, I want to do music full time someday. How do I do that? Let me see how little I can live on. I never saw, I never thought, saw things that way. Never saw things that way. I always looked at it as like, oh, I'm making more. Maybe I'll get a raise. Maybe I'll get a Christmas bonus. Maybe if I hustle some of these graphic design projects on top of my $400 every two week paycheck, I'll be just fine. I'm going to live my best life. Maybe I'll get some money in Christmas cards for my parents or relatives. As a grown man, that kind of starts running out. I don't know about you, but as soon as you hit 18, a lot of those checks, a lot of those little, uh, you know, five spots, 10 spots here and there and Christmas cards disappear because now you're a grown uh, human being that has their, their own responsibilities. Anyway, I digress. I wanted to make this video because I know that this time I'm, I'm having flashbacks, having a conversation with, with somebody I consider a friend, a peer in the space, um, kind of having a hard time right now. Because guess what? It's holiday season. Statistically, as a producer, at least in my own career and a lot of my students, a lot of my friends, my compadres, uh, if you didn't have a very solid Black Friday, Cyber Monday, 
weekend when it came to sales and having all your marketing really built up, right now is kind of the runway that we're, we're waiting to get to the end of. Because people, no matter if it's a rapper or a singer, it, like people that are buying your beats, people that are booking your gigs, people that are using your music, needing songwriting, right now they have a they have family of their own. They might have a little, couple little kids that want that brand new Nerf set, that Lego set that they've been seeing. They need some Hatchimals, they need a, a PS5, right? And so their needs kind of get put on the back burner. Their needs of beats, their needs of kits, their needs of a song, their needs of, and you get what I'm saying. So now is that moment in time where gener generally in my own experience, my personal slow point when it comes to working with artists was typically between Thanksgiving, hopefully Black Friday really hits and I can have a cash infusion into my business to last me until January or February of the next year, back when the energy is, is uh, high again, when people are getting ready to get tax returns, when people are you know, beyond the time spent with their, their friends and family, they have the New Year's resolutions, they wanna push forward, they're excited, and they're ready to do work again. But the issue with that is we sit around then, our rent is still due, our car, our car payments are still coming in, our phone still needs to stay on, those subscription services that you have with all the different VSTs and Dropbox and iTunes storage, like they still come in regardless of if the rappers or the producers or the clients are cutting those checks, paying those invoices. Hard cut, I wanna know right now, are you feeling this? What time during the year is your slow point? I know this year for a lot of us, the entire year has been a slow point, but historically in your music career, in the pursuit of a music career, what have you found to be the slowest parts during the year, on a, in a good year? Let me know in the comments below. Now, how do we combat this? Like I said, budgeting. Any money that you earn, I had, to, I had to learn this the hard way from a CPA who really got on my case when I realized I wasn't paying taxes the way I needed to, and I owed the IRS a significant amount of money from back years that weren't properly reported. You need to save at least 50% of all of your income. I know this is really hard when sometimes you're only making 20 or 50 bucks. If you make 50 bucks, you have $25 to spend. The rest needs to sit in an account. I don't care if you have to pay all of it into taxes. I don't know where you live. I don't know how you're gonna be reporting it or even if you are reporting it. Let's face it, a lot of beat makers out there have never paid a dime in taxes and that's fine, do, do you. I was one of those people at one point too until I couldn't be anymore. What you need to do is you need to set aside half of your income every single time. Doesn't matter if it's a $100 beat, a $10, like 50%. That is not negotiable. Hold it aside for taxes. And at the end of the year, if you don't have to pay them in taxes, then put it in savings, put it in an IRA, put it in the S&P 500, like do whatever you need to do to help that money or use that money to help you find a little stability. Now, what I'm reason that I say this is like I said earlier, when you have a day job, let's say that you're making $500 a week, right? Making two grand take home uh, every single month. Is that how much you need from selling beats or doing music in order to survive, in order to walk away and have some more freedom, have a little bit more control of your own life? Or could you live on less than that? You gotta look in the mirror and really decide what your jump off point is. And then if you want a little bit more stability, you want a little bit more comfort, you need to save what, what's called a runway, right? So that could be three months, six months, a whole year if you're like a worry wart person that needs to plan everything and you know hope for the best. Now what that means is if your absolute needs cost $2,000 a month, let's say your mortgage, you have a car payment, car insurance, phone, all the different utilities, gas, groceries, you name it, is $2,000, that's the bare minimum, that's needs, not wants. That's not Del Frisco's, that's not Burger King, that's not Subway, that's not a new pair of J's, that's needs. Then you need to have at least $2,000 for three to six months, and then you can have a little bit of a, of a buffer if you're making money with your music especially. Now, if you're out there, you've never made a dime with your music, you're thinking about quitting a job, especially if it's like somewhat of a stable job, you might not like it, but you just wanna quit that and thinking that all this time, all this energy that you're now going to have is going to get you to doing music full time. Um, I believe in going all in, don't get me wrong, but there's a way of going all in while balancing both. You need to be disciplined. Most people, when they don't have a day job, I've seen it time and time again, guys. When you lose the day job, it's a whole lot different than when you quit the day job. One is necessity, one is an option. One is a choice, one is a need. So you need to be able to uh, keep yourself accountable, put in the work, absolutely grind your effing face off 
I know that the whole hustle culture, I know that the whole grind all day, no sleep, team no sleep, team like, that could be toxic in itself, but when you only are relying on the money that you're making from the music or any of the side hustles that you're doing, it could be you teach guitar lessons, right? It could be that you're making beats and then on the side you're editing videos as I was just talking to my friend about. Whatever your skill set is, you could still live a life of, f of freedom and fulfillment by doing these things. Don't think for a second that in order to be making it, right, in order to do music full time, you have to quit and everything else is a distraction. That's BS. I've talked about it before on this channel. If you're really good at editing photos, you can have a side hustle editing photos for people that can go to the pot of money income that is going to help you survive and thrive. Not to mention your skill set will get much better because you're do, now doing client work. Expectations are a little bit higher typically. You're gonna have to do a bunch of revisions and learn a bunch of things that you might not know how to do yet. Uh, and I could say that firsthand because doing graphic design and photo editing for clients and copywriting for clients and voiceovers for clients and sync licensing work, it's like you don't have the freedom just to deliver what you want and then be free and clear. They tell you if it's good enough. That's a whole different side thing. Anyway, guys, budgeting is so important. Earning, spending on averages, not on a good month. If you make $10,000 this month and then the next four months, you only make 500 a month, you need to be able to say, okay, that was $12,000 over four months rather than 10,000 and then 2,000. Does that make sense? I hope it, hopefully that makes sense. Because when I first made about $12,000 in a month and then the next two months were, you know, less than five combined, I lived as if every life, every life, every month was a $12,000 month until it wasn't. Rather than taking that 12 plus the five and having three months that were 17, I could have lived very comfortably that way instead of going and buying a bunch of stuff I didn't need, paying for people's lunches like I was a big shot, you know, Wolf of Wall Street all of a sudden. Um, and you have to be really okay with sinking into that reality. Guys, I'm not here to lecture you. I want you to live a better life. I want you to be able to accomplish your goals doing music, doing fitness, doing makeup, doing YouTube, doing anything in the creative space for a living is not easy. There's nothing easy about it. There's systems, there's organization, there's strategies and tactics that make it easier, that make things more efficient. But without those things, you're just kind of floating around and waiting for it to fail. Guys, let me know in the comments below if this is something that you've overcome, if it's something that you're not even there yet, if it's something that you deal with every single day. I'd love to know about it. I'm here for you. Come connect with me over on Instagram. Keep your head up during the holidays and beyond. Watch this video for inspiration, motivation. Watch the other video for some tactics and strategy. Smash that subscribe button to join the channel family here. Smash that bell icon so you can be notified first anytime I upload a video just like this. And I appreciate you watching.